Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to an addendum, a follow-up, a continuation of a series that went live a few weeks ago now, and uh, well, I built this bass, we decided during the live streams following that build, check out the side channel, we decided to make it fretless. And uh, I said in the, in the prize competition giveaway thing that if the person who won it wanted to, well, I could put frets in. And uh, of course they did. Uh, now, to be honest, I actually don't think that that is too much of an issue in the slightest because quite frankly, I've never done this before. So, should be fun. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> Welcome. Should we get on with this? There are deep slots, or slightly deeper slots, yeah, where the markers are, and that's not going to be an issue. At this point, this isn't a guitar build, this is a guitar renovation. We built the instrument, we built the bass, we've, I finished it, we, we did what we needed to do. And it is what it is. Frank is, uh, is, the, the, is the gentleman who won it. He, he bought 30 tickets for the competition and he's ended up with a, a very, very, very cool, <laughs> very cool bass. <laughs> the strings are brand new. I'm not going to change the strings. Adding frets is going to raise everything up a little bit. I might need to do something. I will need to do something with the nut. Absolutely. I might need to make a new one or put a shim underneath. A brass shim under there could be quite cool, but that's not going to raise the... It's not going to lengthen the strings by enough to require me to replace them. That's a really badly placed camera. Hi. How you doing? The first thing to do is to remove the brass inlays. So we need to get rid of those. Now the thing is those were put in at an angle and here it's actually relatively sharp. So if I cut the, the glow-in-the-dark material out of the slot and get a tiny chisel or blade or something under there, it should work fine. I very well may need to use heat at some point. I'm not averse to using fire every now and then. One of my favorite things about this base is that brass-filled acorn around the truss rod axis. So I want to save these strings. But they do need to be taken off, at the very least left there, so that way they're not going to tangle up. Woohoo! Genius! Maybe I'll put something under there, just to stop any potential rasping. Put some masking tape under there, just to protect the edge of the, the base. The radius is 10 inches at the, at the nut. It is actually almost 20, so... Yeah, that's going to be 18. 18 or so at the end there. Well, there's nothing for it. There's really nothing for it. I'm going to hit it with a saw. Aha, I've moved my saw. Would you look at that? Um, by the way, there's a huge sale going on at crimsonguitars.com and vintagetoolshop.com right now. And uh, these tool racks are, or should be, at the very least, available on the website. All right, so the saw is cutting through the softer epoxy quite nicely. I've got a little bit of brass down the end there. I'm not sure how that's going to react. Go in with the. Uh... Oh, that works perfectly. Look at that. It's almost as if this saw was designed specifically for this job. Also, that is Jasper, older sounding dog, and Pippin barking at nothing. Sorry.
I don't like applying heat to a fretboard unless I can absolutely help it. If I apply direct heat to the brass with a soldering iron, for example, which is the first thing, I would be burning around the brass and I don't want to do that. If I cut on either side of it with the scalpel to loosen it a little bit, that could work. And that was a comment just there I've just, just, just read. Um, I'd be widening the end a little bit too much. Goggles. I'm just going to lightly tap the end of the scalpel blade, see what happens. The alternative is I place the scalpel blade on the brass and then I heat up the scalpel blade so that the heat is going from the blade directly to the brass and then that comes out. I think that's probably the best idea, but let's try something a little bit more hitty first, shall we? Small piece, but it's a start. One down, a bunch more to go. Woohoo. Friction creates heat. And also the length of this slot is keeping this all straight. Okay, so it's trying to push the saw that side, but a little bit of friction there should make, should have warmed that up a little bit. There we go. Success. Oh, it is hot. Well, we have a technique. Uh, from here on in, it's just replicating that. Bonus. Okay, here's another option. A set of very oily dental picks. That there, that there's not a dental pick, that's a dental chisel. Ah! Ouch. This is the thing, you collect tools thinking one day you might need them. If this is strong enough, um, yeah, that could work really, really rather well. Okay, a little bit on the brass, warm things up. Lower that down. The pick is, uh, is doing well at clearing the resin. It's not got enough strength. To do anything with the brass. I'm just going to go down to the bench grinder, grind, uh, uh, grind the point off this quickly. In fact, I can probably do it with a leveling bit. Yes, I'm aware if I slip, it's going to cause some trouble. That's why the blade's pointing that way. There we go. And after all the trouble we took to put them in as well. <laughs> so using the, uh, using the leveling beam to take all the blade just to, to blunt that down makes this so much better. It's not digging into either the brass or the fretboard and it's working as a tool much, much more efficiently. 
I think we have hit upon a solution, people. It's less about protecting it, more about letting me know when I start hitting somewhere where I'm not supposed to, or if I start hitting somewhere where I'm not supposed to. Bear in mind, not only do we have the sale going on right now for Crimson Tools and all that jazz, we've also recently set so that in the UK it's free shipping across the board and internationally, i.e. anywhere in the world, shipping is capped at no more than £20 per parcel, no matter what you are ordering, um, whether it's a, a, a set of templates that would normally cost 50 or £60 or five sets of templates or a kit guitar or a guitar. £20 no more than 20 pounds shipping because we we love you guys and uh, <laughs> i say that ironically we love you guys and we really appreciate your support now look at that two four six there's only seven left This one's being a little bit problematic. <laughs> there we go. Fred pullers. I am very much in love with this instrument. Okay, so that took about an hour, about an hour to get uh, uh, all of that gone and to figure out how to do it in the first place. I just need to go through the whole thing again, make sure that the depth is right. There are a few things worse than having to take a fret out because it's not going all the way down, it's not seating properly. And at that point, well, we can start playing with fret wire, can't we? Oh, that was close. Let's avoid that. Okay, next up, uh, triangular file. I want to chamfer the edge of the fret slots just to make the fret seat easier. Uh, it stops you going in at an angle if you hit it slightly sideways with the hammer and you know, all of that jazz. Uh, need to find it first.
I need to get this to be about 10 inch radius. Now, if the fret wire is radiused tighter than the fretboard, the ends go in and they don't want to pop out when you're hammering or, or, or pressing them in, and the ends will slide through underneath the fretboard with the knobbly bits of the tang pushing underneath fresh wood so it holds it in more solidly. Probably actually should put a thumb screw on that. This doesn't need to be absolutely precise. I want some spring in the frets. By saying I want some spring in the frets, I want them to be pulling themselves down into the fretboard rather than pulling away from the fretboard. Uh, now, the, the, the act of hammering them in of pressing them in is going to remove some of that tension, but the default is always going to be uh, pulling down towards the fretboard and we will have a nice, uh, well, we won't have, we will have a nice time installing them, shall we say. Nicely done. Onwards. Now, It feels so weird coming to this side to get my cutters. They've always been on that side up to now. Side cutters, these are more in industries. They're incredible. I absolutely love these. So I need to cut them longer, longer than I need. And I want the, I want the jaws to close evenly on the tang section so that you don't twist it. I'm being a little bit more careful this time as well, uh, because I've, I've got a full finish on this guitar already. Or bass, shall we say. That'll do nicely. This is this is a fun trick. So obviously we don't want the frets skittering about the place. I also don't want them standing up in holes because you slip, you stab them through your hand, you get nickel silver poisoning and all that jazz. Not fun. They're all in position. And out of the way. Ta-da! <laughs> I need to stick into my bench and uh, this base is taking up most of that space. So flip that over, sticky side up. And then I'll take the, uh, take the ends down. Just like that. All good. I, I always put glue in the bottom of the fret slots. It's not necessarily to glue the frets in, it is to solidify the neck. Uh, I don't want any cavities in there. Just wood glue uh, does absolutely fine. This is also much easier to clean up after the fact than super glue or anything like that. No matter how careful you are with a wicking tip and all of that, super glue gets everywhere. You have to scrape the fretboard off. If you scrape the fretboard off, you have to sand it down. You have to hit it with a fret polishing rubber in order to normalize. It's just so much work for no reason. Let's just use water, water-based glue, and some tissue to clean it up. Let's do two just, for, just to start off with. I'll end up with three or maybe even four at a time soon. Oh. 
Oh, come on, then. So this cleans the excess off. There is going to be a little bit uh, on the edge of the fretboard as well. But the nice thing about this is, when you come back in, uh, you've had a little bit of water, and if you've got a gap on the f uh, underneath the fret, as you hammer it in, you should see where there was a gap. So that now has pushed a little bit more. There we go. We've got a tiny amount being pushed out from the edges. No more cleanup re required. Um, I'm going to put in another isotune because fretting is loud. Okay, so end of the fretboard here. Uh, there is glue. It's not entirely cured yet. So what I need to do is with the crimson fret end cutters, just get rid of everything. That'll take some glue and there's gonna be some cleaning up as well. Right then, this has been fun. Time to protect the body so that I can get in and sort these fret ends out. Angle. Be careful. So 
So you can hear the difference when you hit the wood. Uh, I've rounded the fretboard over a little bit. Uh, onto the other side now. So with the uh, fret ends sorted out, I'm going to go with a fret end dressing file and uh, round them over just a little bit. We're not going to go for a full semi-hemispherical uh, thing here, just uh, comfortable. Took me a while to find this. There's a, a lot of wooden handles up on there. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to hit it with a leveling beam first and just polish that end up. Okay, so with that polished and nice, I'm going to stand here awkwardly for a while just to yeah, be awkward and stuff. Um, yeah. I've saved a lot of work later on. Sorry about that audio, I'm not sure how long it went on for, but yeah, that's what happens when these wonderful Sennheisers lose battery in the lapel rather than the receiver. It's stupid. With the fret ends mostly done, it's time to mark the top of each fret with a permanent marker, check the level of the neck using a notch straight edge, and then well, let's get these things labeled, shall we? Alright, so the, the neck is now perfectly straight and that means that I can level the frets. Woohoo! Leveling beam. I'm more into leveling beams now than leveling files, which is strange because uh, for the first decade of my life I used leveling files and nothing else. These are pretty cool. I'm not pushing too hard, I've got the neck supported in the middle, I've got my hand touching the back of the neck so that I can feel if there's any strange movement going on and we just gently move along. And I'm using 320 grit paper on the levelling beam that is now relatively old, so it's probably closer to 400 or so. Very gentle. On with the Fred Rocker. I've not had to take off very much material here at all, which means that I don't actually need to use a crowning file on these frets at all. Um, that doesn't happen very often. Generally, you'll have one or two or three frets that are significantly, in terms of a tenth of a millimeter or so, off the height. So you take more material off either most of them, and you've got one or two that are low and you know, not very much. Um, but on these, actually, uh, it all went in very, very evenly, and the fretwood was absolutely perfect. And 
because the uh, the nut was adjusted and we used the notch straight edge. Everything was perfect. So I don't need a crowning file. I've removed an equal amount off the top of all of these frets. That's quite exciting because, hell, I might actually finish this by dinner. Woohoo. Come check it out. Instead of a crowning file, I'm going to go straight to 600 grit wet and dry. Uh, that's just to, and um, it's going to be dry, and this is just to start getting rid of the scratches from the 320 grit leveling beam. I'll then hit it with a few fret rubbers and then go and buff it on the wheel and be done pretty much in time for dinner. Wrap it around your fingers, like so. Or if you want, you could wrap it around a fret rubber. Nice. All right, this is uh, <laughs> this really is going rather well today. Let's not jinx it. With the super fine, I'm just going to go and quickly homogenize the fretboard. We'll then mask it off with um, with masking tape, buff on the machine, and we're back to stringing a guitar up. Uh, I will need to do something about the nut.
I am really, really liking this. Is this not? Yeah. Woo. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of um, uh, fretboard restorative on here. And uh, string her up. I think I'm going to have to put a wedge underneath the nut. Need to boost the nut up. We always knew that. Um. <laughs> ah. That's it. Very thin brass. The same thin brass we used as the uh, fretless markers. So yeah, that'll do nicely. It's around about the right thickness. Um, onwards. I put too much glue underneath this nut. It's, uh, well, it's gonna take a little bit of heat to, to release. Yeah, far too much glue in there. Make it slightly oversized. Yeah, that'll do it. Double check before I put the glue in. Perfection, I'm gonna take this off, 
glue it in and we will be done. Finally. The intonation's not quite on. I'm gonna have to sort that out at headquarters. Um, well, here we go. I'm really happy. This bass looks so good with frets on. There's something about the frets that just make all the difference, in my opinion. Anyway. One bass. Now fretted. Please, click like, subscribe, check out our other videos. Uh, there's currently a sale going on at headquarters. I'm sure I, I mentioned that at crimsonguitars.com and vintagetoolshop.com and I need to build more bases. I really need to build more bases. What, what would you like to see me make next? <laughs> yeah, baby. I like. There's a lot. I wish I could play.